I was excited for the Jaguars when they hired Urban Meyer. I thought that, you know, I thought it was an opportunity for him to get his feet wet in the pros and really do an amazing job. Now, I'm like, all that energy that I had for him in Jacksonville is gone, right? And, and, and when you look at it, it it's, it's tone deaf as far as I'm concerned with Urban Meyer right now. Given our climate and the things that we've gone through over the last four years here in our country, let's just say that. And then you go out there and you hire somebody. Yeah, you've known him for 20-plus years and you've vetted him. Yes, all of those things are true. You can say that. But yet and still, the allegations at Iowa was disturbing. They gave him $1.1 million to leave for a reason. And as fit, over 50 players came to the university athletic department and told their stories. Out of 50 players, everybody can't be lying. Now you, in your first opportunity, your first job in the National Football League, you want to start by hiring a guy that had racial itch issues at the school that he was at as a head strength and conditioning coach over a 20-year span at the University of Iowa. And Urban Meyer made the decision to bring him in to the organization in Jacksonville and believe that he's going to be a, a value to some of the players that are coming into those locker rooms that when free agency hits, that you can explain to those players that, oh, no, he's okay, we vetted it. You can explain that to players? I doubt it. Now, everybody is going to say, well, you got to give him the benefit of the doubt. Maybe he's changed. The dude just was fired nine months ago. So you're going to make that big of a change and that big of a swoop in nine, nine months on your views. The way I've always seen it, maybe he didn't use the N-word, as he said, he's never done that. He doesn't condone those sort of things. This came out of Chris Dole's mouth. He doesn't condone that. Got it. Maybe you didn't use that. But you certainly have said some things that made people uncomfortable. Having been in that locker room and been in other locker rooms, Molly and Max, I can mm -hmm. assure you, players are going to be looking at him sideways when they walk into that facility. Whenever that takes place, I don't care what anybody says. Because in the end, yeah. he's only as good as his word. And his word was bad at Iowa. Mm -hmm. So when, God, when you have veteran guys, the moment that you say something. Grown men. Grown men with, as I like to say, full beards, yeah. some of them. Grown yeah. men with baby car seats in the back. It's different in college. Mm -hmm. When you have a 17, 18, 19, 20-year-old guy trying to get to where these 27, 28-year-old men are at, they're going to kind of let things slide until they get to that point for fear of getting kicked out of school, for fear of being benched, for fear of the scholarship and education being taken away from them. In the National Football League, that doesn't work because they got millions of dollars in their bank accounts. And so in the end, he's going to have to answer to some of those individuals when they have that team meeting. Yep. Yep. They're going to be asking him questions. In the moment that he says something slightly or give them a certain look or a certain tone, is going to be problematic for Urban Meyer in that organization. I, I want to read the ESPN. And of ESPN. all the years to have this kind of hire. Go ahead, Max. Yeah, right, Molly. That's right. That's, I thought that was a very good point. Yeah. Um, um, I want to read the ESPN reporting about this. Over the past year, numerous former Iowa players spoke about mistreatment within the Iowa program. Numerous uh, players. A number of black players said that Doyle used racist language and treated them differently based on their race, a number of. I'm assuming that number is not one or two. I believe that number is 50. Right. It's a, it's a lot of, it's a lot. It's a high number. So what are the odds that everyone is out of their mind and, and making it up or misinterpreting things? It's pretty low, it seems to me. Now, do I believe that is disqualifying? I actually don't. I don't think in American life, people who have made mistakes should be permanently disqualified from employment in their chosen profession. However, before you can say, well, okay, fine, they're ready, I think there has to be some accountability, you know, and it's not enough for the head coach to say, I vetted him and the players are going to have to trust what I say. That's used, he's used to a college atmosphere. Yes. And let's be honest about what happens on a college level uh, in basketball and football at the highest levels. 
it is coaches making millions of dollars um, and the players, and by the way, TV networks and schools making millions of dollars on these programs, and the players are unpaid. And not only are they unpaid, but it wasn't that long ago that guys could get in trouble because they ate a bagel, but there was cream cheese on the bagel, and does that get, literally, what's that about? Why are, why are the rules of amateurism so strictly enforced? Is that about keeping it pure and, well, partly because they're, we're selling the product back to you, the fan, right? And partly it's because of control. You want to control an unpaid labor force. And, and, and the reason the racial issue is so important here is predominantly what is that unpaid labor force in college and then in the NFL? What, when we talk along racial lines, who is the owner of the team always, almost always the AD, usually the head coach and, and on the one hand, and then who are the players on the other? So when an issue comes up like this, and the coach talks about transparency, but in fact, the vetting process will tell us about the vetting process. What was that? It's not transparent, just saying, trust your, my players have to trust me. I'll take care of the vetting process. I, that, as Key said, in college, because they are controlled, because they do hope to one day make a living in this profession, it's easier to get away with that. In the pros, when you're dealing with the best in the world, and, and, and they've proven that, and they have millions of dollars, much harder to get away with that nonsense. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.